You're listening to the Empowering Process Podcast with your host, Gail Kraft. Listen as she holds frank discussions around how your purpose, being present, and trusting your power impacts your life. Whether you're an entrepreneur, leader, or developing your vision, you'll find wisdom and insights you can utilize right now. Welcome your host, Gail Kraft. Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome. This is Gail Kraft from the Empowering Process Podcast. And I have with me my dear friend for quite a while now, Nikki H. And yes, it's just the letter H. And there's a long story behind that. Nikki is a dancer, a performer, a choreographer, a muse, a coach. She's a Renaissance woman. She does have her degree in aerospace engineering and yet has followed where her passion leads her. She has thrilled audience members and event guests for over 20 years as a dancer, performer, choreographer, instructor, and producer with experience in over 20 dance styles. Not afraid to be bold or embrace the unusual, this sassy bombshell is on a mission to inspire and delight as a modern day muse and creativity coach. With her signature encouraging and playful attitude, which you'll get to see, Nikki has a knack for breaking down concepts step by step in a way that both is both easy to follow and highly entertaining. She is a captivating speaker and MC, the creator of the Creativity Activation Masterclass, the 30-Day Creativity Boost, and an international bestseller co-author of the book One your wellness guide to mind, body, and soul. Nikki is also known for her burlesque and cabaret-inspired workshop, Discover Your Inner Bombshell, which I've taken, and is the host of the dance podcast, Oh, for the Love of Dance. Nikki's work can be seen in Huffington Post, US Weekly, NBCnews.com, and so much more. Today, we're going to be talking about worthiness. Welcome, Nikki. Hello, hello. (laughs) So excited to be here with you. (laughs) This is going to be amazing. So we've known each other for quite a while. And, um, And one of the things that really impressed me when I first met you, first of all, we met on a wooded, woody, limousine going up to a winery or the, the vineyards to drink and dance and eat right? Yes. <laughs> right so how best to meet Nikki right <laughs> um but what impressed me is that you made a living off of what you wanted no matter what and in the process still gave back I remember that you took your burlesque gear to to like was it old age homes or something so the ladies could dress up and just feel good about themselves so that this whole I'm going to make a living I'm going to do what I want how I want and I'm going to still give back with whatever I can really was amazing to me talk talk a little bit about that time and how you broke away from this path of being a serious aerospace engineer and being (laughs) a burlesque dancer and so much more. Oh, goodness. Oh, and the dress up thing was, um, I did some festivals and expos and I took all my stuff with us for the people at the festival to be dressing up and taking photos, being all sassy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) So I would say, how did I get into that? I would say that my body actually had a very very strong message for me when I was not really following my heart and I have since learned to listen to it so that doesn't happen because it actually the two times that has happened it took me out completely so I was going down this these paths whatever that was at the time that did not align with what was in my heart and the stuff that I did was the things in my heart were like on the side and then when the time came my body is was like you you're not listening these are the things you should be doing (laughs) and the second time that happened I I for sure decided it would always be following my heart right because I I did not it was it was also just where you know where the the aliveness and the joy and the happiness and 
the peace and everything was in the following my heart and not doing the other things. And to be clear, the other things I was good at, I was very, very good at them. Um, but it was not what brought me joy. And also like the thing that I did for engineering was still creative problem solving and creativity. So it's really still in there with me. It's just in a different form. now. <laughs> oh, right. Well, you can shape and mold, um, your heart's desire into almost anything that you do for right sure. um yeah. you know for for me so dancing has always been a dream of mine at 12 i i wanted to be that's my career and i was told no i mean uh, barriers were put up so i did not follow that but dance was always part of my life it had to be part of my life right and so now I do exactly what you do. Maybe I don't dance. Um, I did do that for, um, for quite a while. But I, if, if I want to take off, right, I just came back from six weeks on the road. That, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right, where I got Nikki's on one coast, I'm on the other. We got to have coffee together, right? <laughs> Yay, coffee. <laughs> Yay, coffee, right? And so, um, and so this, this ability to... Um, excuse my language, fuck you, I'm going to do what I want, right? And not from a place of anger or harshness, but, you know, love yourself and love others for, for having their opinion. So earlier, we talked about outside stressors versus inside stressors, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right? So talk, tell me a little bit about what we mean when we talked about that the outside so, versus inside <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about the being deserving and being worthy and we were talking about how there is all the stuff outside of you that can contribute to whether you decide you are worthy or deserving or the society let's say or if people around you think you are deserving or worthy so that it could be the way that things are set up it could be what people say about you it could be things about people that people say about what you might work on right so I would say one of the things that can be difficult is if you do go against the grain in any way there will likely be some kind of feedback comments pushback something like that that may not look good or feel good <laughs> but but then that's from the outside but then also there's also stuff that comes out from you on the inside when you are maybe trying a new adventure or something that you haven't done before or something that is against the grain because it's you know it's a little bit unusual which is which is interestingly now the thing that I am known for is that I am unusual and bold and sassy and that's exactly the thing that makes me stand out right, right. and and makes me memorable so the um, I think the challenge for a lot of people is is either or right it's either outside and or inside or oh, it's both it could be both. both it could mm -hmm. be both yeah right and it could be one day and not the other day right oh, my, oh my god <laughs> so so we we were talking about for example <laughs> right <laughs> right so you have maybe you're not aware of an outside influence but you're not feeling positive about a choice that you want to make so now the decision is am i not am i feeling this way because it's my intuition telling me no this is the wrong way to go or am i feeling this way because i have a programming right from society telling me that that's bad and so i have to figure out where's the voice coming from yeah. right is the voice really so embedded in me that i think it's me but it's not right <laughs> Right. And then, you know, unraveling that, right. In order to make a choice that's congruent with really who you are and, and the key is really congruent with who you are. Yeah. Um, I spent some time during my, uh, my trip with people I haven't seen some, I mean, some people for like 15, 16 years, I haven't seen them for so long. Wow. And, yeah. And, um, and it was very, very interesting because after being a coach, um, I no longer will apologize for coaching you during a conversation. It's who I am. <laughs> if you can't take it, then don't have coffee with me. Right. Oh, it's so <laughs> funny. It's so true. You just, it's just, it just pulls out of you. Uh, right. It right. Pulls out of right. You. right. <laughs> and and so, I feel you. <laughs> yeah. So I'm hearing things like, you know, um, well, you know, I don't understand why people would even do that or choose that thing. 
and I'm sitting there listening to this and I'm like, well, it's not something that you, it floats your boat, but it's floating somebody's boat. And who are you to judge that it turns them on? Exactly. Right? I mean, that's why there's so many choices in the world because there are so many people who have different desires, right? Right. Right? Different Um, flavors. I was (laughs) listening to somebody talk about flavors and I was like, oh, that's a really good way to describe it. Different flavors or like different different shades, right? Different, there's literally millions of colors. Right? <laughs> many people as there are in this world, that's right? how many choices there are. There we go. Right? And that's how many yeah. perspectives there are. So um, so for me, we were talking uh, about the fact that I was going to be a dancer. So I'm going to talk about outside influences um, and then oh, working yes. on that, you know, I don't deserve and then coming through that. Right? And so I was raised, you can't, for most of my choices as a child, because my father, my father was quite old. And so very old school and from Europe. And so it was like, you can't be a dancer because you're just going to get married and have babies. That's too hard of a career for a woman. I'm like most dancers are women. Okay. Right. You can't take the college course because you're just going to get married and have babies. And that's a waste of money. You can't go to college because, you know, you're just going to get married. And so just getting married and having babies was programmed. And by the time I was 24, I was married. I had a one and a half year old daughter and I was divorced. Whoa. Right. Whoa. And so my identity that was placed on me yeah. was gone. And, and I sat there going, well, now what the fuck do I do? <laughs> right? Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was at that point that I, at 25, I remember making the choice, you know, to work, to get us out of the slummy situation we're in and be responsible for my own outcome. Mm-hmm. And I literally was in the shower going, you're an adult today. It's time to put your big girl panties on and act like one, right? I owned a home, a brand new car, and was a manager by the time I was 28. Amazing. Absolutely right? amazing. Right? Right? And so that, but that means I didn't come at it from a place of curiosity then. I came yeah. at it as, from a place of anger, right? Yeah. So I pushed to it. Um, it wasn't for a, a, a couple of years, I think two jobs maybe later that um, I sat down and started getting curious about my choices and are they my choices and right. why yeah. am I making, am I making a choice because I'm responding to a negative influence? And if I am, is it still the right choice for me? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so we all have these experiences, right? What happened to you that you went, Oh, yay, I got this marvelous degree, aerospace engineering, and you know, I did quite well as at the top of my class, and I'm not doing this. <laughs> it was actually in my junior year that I yeah. realized that I would not be happy every day waking up for that work, and it had to do with the let's say the environment mostly more than anything else to be in a room with no windows with gray walls sitting in front of a computer all day working on the same thing for six years because that's the kind of thing that happens in aerospace it's not an overnight kind of industry (laughs) so I would be on the same widget you know for I don't know how many years and it did not appeal to me at that point because I had also been in th- doing some projects and things and and be like this is what my future is going to look like like at, at a, an actual engineering company we had I had a project that I worked on as part of the assembly line and I went there once a, once a week for a few hours and I couldn't handle it for those few hours <laughs> and I'm also just I'm really social and very very much a people person and I love engineers but there's not that kind of social aspect to engineering for the most part it's uncommon so when I realized that I would not be happy every day when I like I would not be like woohoo I get to go to work today like that's 
when I was like, this is not for me. I don't think I should be doing this for my work. But that didn't mean that I didn't want to finish the degree because, I mean, I was already almost done. But the one thing that I will say about it is it actually showed me what I was capable of as far as like what my brain could do and what could be created. And I don't regret it for a second. So that's what happened to me is I had this massive realization that the rest of my life would look like that. And I was not interested in having that. So that, that's how I said, okay, no aerospace engineering work for me. I'm not going to go into the industry. And, and mom and dad were so supportive. Oh, thank God. My mom and dad were supportive. Yeah. Um, because then what ended up happening is I actually went into the family business because at that point I was like, I have had this plan since I was, because this is the other thing. I had this plan since I was like 14, 15 years old that I was going to be an aerospace engineer. I was going to do my master's. I was going to work for Learjet in Long Beach and I mean Gulfstream and Long Beach. And that was what I was going to do. So I had no idea what to do after that. Uh, I had no real direction at all because this whole time right so that and um, what's that five years ish right five six years right with this plan coming from south africa going to ucsd doing this stuff and then i was like mm, there is no plan now and what <laughs> happens now um what i ended up doing though is my last year of college actually expanding my class choices because then I, I ended up doing five years because, because engineering can be rough, right? But then I ended up doing all these other things, you know, like the things that actually were the stuff, like the passion that I had, I just never took classes in it. So my, I've been dancing my whole life since I was four years old. My mom always encouraged our creativity just as much as she encouraged us to do well in school. My siblings and I were all very studious and we did great and we didn't need any, uh, let's say, bribing or rewards or anything like that to do good in school we just were that's just what happened but she also made sure that we had a lot of creativity and joy and invention and cure like a curiosity was fed all the time so yeah at the end of college I didn't really know what I was doing um, but then I hurt my back and that is actually I think what really changed everything because because then I was just for a year, just kind of with myself. So for whatever reason, I needed to go through that. And then I ended up working for the family business for a little bit, <laughs> but that was, that was also supposed to be temporary. And I ended up being there for 10 years. And then, like I said, my body was like, mm, these things that you're doing, but it also was in relation to some of my side stuff too. Like the, the dying thing was not about the passion and the love anymore. It was more about like, Let's see how many shows we can get for my performance. Let's see, let's do all this, you know, behind the scenes stuff. So yeah, rude awakenings in some ways because my body just was like, nope, this is not the path for stopping. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so um, and so what did you do? I, I know that you left the family business. Um, I know that you left San Diego. I right. did. Yeah. I did eventually. Yeah. Because I had my, I was working for the family business and had my burlesque dance company at the same time for a while. And then I was doing like part time for the family and more on my own stuff and my own events. But again, I wasn't really following the inspiration and the passion and joy of it. So, yeah, that was, it was all really great. But then, came to a grinding halt and had some things happen for like three or four years. And then I was like, you know what? I just want something different. I just want to have the last time I had a grand adventure, let's say it was, well, I had two. One was coming to, to San Diego from South Africa, but then the other one was my burlesque dance company, which was a complete accident. It was only supposed to be one show and then ended up with a company for seven years. <laughs> But I wanted something different. And, and I had this crazy idea that I want to just try something somewhere else. And I have people in, in Dallas that are like my family, that, that I love and, and they love me. So I was, and I like Dallas. So I was like, I'm just, I think I'm going to go see what happens in Dallas. And I literally 
packed up and took care of everything in like six weeks because I was like, when's the cheapest flight to Dallas? It was in March and that was like the end of December or something, something ridiculous, January, something like that. So in six weeks or whatever it was, five weeks, I was on my way to Dallas. And then I just went without any plans for six weeks. Um, and I really loved it. <laughs> it was a really good idea. <laughs> Turned out to be one of the best things I ever did. <laughs> right? right? I mean, that, that kind of thing is something that, like, not everybody, I don't know, maybe it's a, a little bit of courage, a little bit of, I was talking to somebody about this yesterday, I think it was yesterday, but, like, if change versus familiarity, right? Like, and what is actually more painful? Is it more painful to stay the same or to change? Because for some people, it's more it's scary to change. So... I think that it got to the point that I was just, I couldn't do the same thing anymore the way that I was doing it. So just shook it up, right? Just shake it all up and just go. <laughs> and, just, and just go. Um, but you had the, the basics of believing that number one, you can achieve what it is that you're going to do and yeah. that you deserve the freedom to make the choices available to you. For sure. For right. Sure. Yeah. And, and not many people um, recognize that in themselves. That's very true. Yeah. Right. So, true. Um, so when I, when I, you know, this is a thing came to my mind as, as you were talking, um, I was raised with a lot of negative <laughs> quotes and my brother used to say, you know, people don't go see the doctor until the pain in their leg is more painful than the pain they think they're going to get when they see the doctor. Right. And so that, oh, yeah. you know, how you do one thing is how you do everything. So true. <laughs> so, so true. true. <laughs> so true. <laughs> I love you, Nikki. Um, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> and so, so when you think of that statement, I mean, you know, that, is true for a lot of people mm -hmm. that they are comfortable in the pain because it's it, it's familiar right yeah. why do battered women stay in the relationship that they're in right why why do you know people who are addicted to drugs who know that they want to get out of it still stay in that relationship right it's because it's comfortable they know what to expect right they they know i can control this situation until i can't control it Right. And then they even know what happens when they can't control it. Right. It's a familiar landscape. Yeah. Um, stepping out of the familiar is frightening. And making change is painful. I am not going to lie to you guys. You know, my clients do cry. Right. But it's a cry of release. Yeah. Right. It's not a, a cry. It's not a a stabbing cry. It's a, oh my God, I can breathe cry. Yeah. It's a cleansing cry. Um, but so many people are so afraid of letting go um, of whatever it is because they don't believe that they deserve more. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? And we're all worthy. I mean, as little infants, every single one of us came out of the womb. No, that's not true because Every single one of us are conceived, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, with all of the possibilities in the universe yeah. available to us, yeah. right? Now that starts to change as mother's emotions start to affect your development. So that's why I say in the womb, things happen in the womb. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, so um, is there, yeah. Yes, un unfortunately, um, it's true. And then... Um, that's when programming starts and then programming is so severe up until about the age of seven and then it slows down until nine. I mean, children are an open slate. Yeah. Right. And whatever you put little in. Little sponges. Yeah. Oh my gosh. They're little sponges. They're little sponges. And they, and they hear what, what is being said. They watch what's being done and they mimic and believe that this is life and that this is truth. Right. Yeah. Um, it's at the age of six or seven that trauma starts to set in because it's at that age that um, children start, you, they start the process of discernment, mm -hmm. 
right? Discernment really starts to flourish at nine, but it starts at seven. And that's when the wounds really anchor in. And so, you know, when I do timeline work with people, I'm not surprised when I ask for, give me a number as to, or we're talking about this pain, give me a number, they say seven. Oh, seven. I'm like, okay, let's go, right? And let's, and let's heal and forgive, right? And so when we talk about being worthy and, and being deserving, I want to say to anyone who's listening, forget outside. Let's like, we'll talk about forgiveness in some other episode, <laughs> right? <laughs> Let's forget them. Let's work on you, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's one thing, one small thing, and I'm all about little baby steps so that they stick one small thing that you can do to feel a little better about who you are today for example some people it might be i'm going to eat a piece of fruit i don't eat fruit at all <laughs> i'm going to get some grapes or i started with blueberries i did not eat fruit for most of my childhood and then <laughs> at about in my mid-20s or so i started looking at maybe you should start taking care of this body right and someone idea. said, you, you should have so much fruit every day. I'm like, you're kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> right? You've got to be joking. Yeah. Right? And they said, all right, start, start with, you know, oatmeal in the morning, because oatmeal I can do, and take a handful of blueberries and throw them in there. There we and go. I'm like, okay, I can do that. So what I'm saying is, can you just take a handful of blueberries and throw them in there? That's all I was asked to do. I wasn't asked to go get bananas and apples and pears, but just a handful of blueberries. And if you don't like blueberries, what kind of berry do you like? Yeah. Right? And yeah. just throw it in there. And um, and then once I got accustomed to that, like I don't eat oatmeal now unless I can put blueberries in there. <laughs> <laughs> I love blueberries in my oatmeal. Right? <laughs> right? Um, it's a conscious choice. So what's one thing? Like, Nikki, if you think of one thing, like if you were to make a commitment this week to change one thing up, to make your life a little bit, though yours is awesome, a little bit more <laughs> fulfilling, a little bit more worthy, um, what do you think that would be? Well, I could talk about me, but I think I would love to share what I would so I host creativity challenges and I am about to be hosting a group program that is about activating creativity and the whole everything that I work with has to do exactly with the idea of the small little things that you can do and one of my favorite uh, ideas in that no joke is to put on a song while you're brushing your teeth and just dance around in your bathroom because you're brushing your teeth anyway, you're just standing there anyway. Why right? not put some movement and fun and delight in your life while you brush your teeth? And then also because moving boosts your creativity, there's a connection with that too. But that is the beginning of your day, you brushing your teeth anyway, like you were saying, you know, blueberries go into your oatmeal, right? So there's always right. this connection between, oh, oatmeal equals blue, like blueberries come with the oatmeal. Right. So right. rather than being like, I'm gonna find five minutes to have a little dance party somewhere in my day, which I totally recommend as well, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> when you're cooking, put on music, dance around in your kitchen, like really, <laughs> you, you know. Mu music on in the supermarket, I'm the one pushing the cart, dancing <laughs> and singing. <laughs> That's me too. <laughs> I just embarrass my kids. They'd be, oh no, here she goes. Oh man, when I was in college, I'm in my with my ballroom dance team. That's exactly what we would do. We would be, you know, cha cha and doing Lindy Hop in the the refrigerator aisles and dancing around. But exactly, just something as simple as putting on a song. And my choice, what I would. So when I first started the creativity challenge, it was to get back into my own creativity. And the thing that I decided to do was, it was actually like the thing was a commitment to move every day is what one of the challenge, the prompts was. And I decided to do merengue, I put on a merengue song while I brush my teeth, which is how this all came to be. And merengue, you get a really great uh, ab workout from. So <laughs> that's, that was a bonus. I also like, right? instead of doing a hundred crunches, I just did merengue. So, but then it can stick because you brush your teeth 
every day anyway. Right. So just attach it to, you know, attach this thing or whatever it is that you're trying to do to something that you already do. Right. And um, I, I guarantee you it will change your life <laughs> to dance around while you're brushing your teeth in the morning or at night because you do it twice a day. So you may as well right? do it in the night too. Why you not? You do it both times, right? Why not? Why, Why not? not? I love it. I love it. I think I just might start doing that myself. <laughs> Because I'm always looking looking for joy um, in my days. And one of the things that um, I did a couple of years ago, and we talked about this, was 75 hard. And yes. That, oh, my goodness. Right. Yeah. yeah. So great that you did that. <laughs> oh, my God. And, and I did it. <laughs> um, and But the lesson from that, the, the multifaceted lesson from that really is about um, making a commitment that you can actually stick to. Now, I talked about um, not doing it, right, um, with, the, with the gentleman who was, he was like having a bunch of people, let's do it together, we can support each other and cheer each other on. And, and I said, that, you know, I need to think about it because I don't make a commitment unless I can commit to my commitment, right? And I don't want to start this thing and not finish it through. And so it's a big chunk and I have to have a conversation with me as to, you know, how serious are you with doing this, right? And so, and so, yeah, so it was a big thing and, and I did it and yay, I'm glad I did it. Uh, it gives me some credibility, but it also for me was a huge lesson in how much my subconscious tries to trick me up every single day. Every single, you know, Nikki doesn't wake up this awesome right? She wakes up with a mindset of like, well, do I have to do this today? <laughs> oh, crap. What did I say I was going to get done? And then switching the perspective, right? Yeah. Choosing to switch the perspective. And it's so easy to give in. I think, yeah, it's, it totally is easy. And I think that the maybe one of the keys is to look at why you chose to do the commitment. Right. Because I think it's so easy to just be like, oh, I don't feel like it because there's, you know, inertia or whatever is going on or you've done a bunch of stuff that day. But to actually revisit why you chose to do it in the first place and why is it actually important to you? And and I think that I've been thinking a lot about this kind of stuff in the beginning of the year, shifting some things and just being like, well, <laughs> really looking at. I, these are the things I say I want. This is who I want to be. Now, if I, if I truly want that, then what is it that I need to do? What is it that I need to let go of? And that kind of fits into that, right? Like the, if I chose this for myself, it's because I want it for myself, for, for my life every day or for who I want to become or for the things that I want to achieve. And re revisiting that when it gets hard, when you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to try. I mean, you, round of applause for you for doing 75 hard. I would have been like, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm not even remotely interested in that. <laughs> well, you know, we deserve the work it takes, mm, right? So I deserve a good point. the yeah. outcome. I deserve the focus. Yeah. I deserve to create the person that I want to be or create the life that I want to live or create the friends I want to have or create the spouse I want to be with. Yeah. Right. And yes, we do create, we create what it is that we're looking for mm -hmm. and then hold space for it to come in. Right. And um, I'm going to get unwoo woo. <laughs> Okay. Do it, do right? it. Because <laughs> otherwise, I'm I'm gonna go woo woo, and then people this is like so funny is over. You know, I'm uh, like woo woo and engineering in one. Right, right, right. <laughs> I know, I know. We can do them both. We can do them both. right. So, totally. so when I when I say um, you bring them in, you don't bring them in. They've been there all along. Mm -hmm. It really is um, an exercise. It's called hakala, which is um, a Hawaiian word, and it's an exercise about focus. And if you practice that, I have clients do that. You guys can do that. Pick a spot on the wall and focus on that spot. Really focus on that spot on the wall. And then notice your peripheral vision because you're focusing on the spot on the wall. Keep your focus on the spot of the wall and open up your vision. Keep your focus on the spot of the wall and open up your vi vision. Do that a couple of times 
a day if you can, but at least once a day, right? What ends up happening is you end up with 365 degree or three, whatever that 360 degree focus. And I'll give you a story in a moment to prove that this is true, <laughs> <laughs> right? This also opens up your mind, not just your eyeballs, but your mind. And so the things that you are not aware of that are going on in your life peripherally, now you see, and you might go, oh, what is that? Oh, you've been there. Like when I talk to Mark about you, mm. right? He's, he's like, we're in the same community. What do you mean we haven't met? <laughs> right? <laughs> Oh my goodness. She wants the same things as me. What do you mean we haven't? <laughs> <laughs> oh right? my goodness. Right? right? Yeah. It, you know, it's just, you probably have passed each other, you know, who knows? Yeah. It's just because your peripheral vision hasn't been open. So I used to crew um, for many motivational speakers. And this particular exercise is done during an NLP training. Mm. All right, because we're talking about opening up our own uh, awareness. And so here I am, I'm crewing. I've been doing this exercise for you know a couple of years now. And I sit down, we do the exercise. The exercise following that is a three-person test. So I sit on a chair and someone sits across from me. The person behind me is doing thumb up, straight, or down. The person in front of me, you know the exercise, is, says, Let's say we're going to use earth, dirt, ground, sky, moon, back to the clouds, dirt, right? So they're going to give me words that are going up or down on the category they pick. Yeah. The person behind me is moving their thumb and I'm going thumbs up, thumbs up, down, sideways. And the person in front of me hasn't said a word. Right. And they, they're yeah. like, how do you know? Because <laughs> I could feel what was going on. Yeah. Man, that's that's so what good. happens. So right? good. Yes. So good. Yes. So, you know, opening up your peripheral. But I, at that time, was so sure of where I wanted to go and knew I deserved every juicy bite of my life. And, you know, I call my life delicious. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And I deserve to bite into the peach and have it be juicy and flavorful. I deserve just like the next person. I deserve whatever it is. And I don't want what you have. And I love the, your success. And I love where you're going, right? Whoever yeah. the other person is, yeah. there is no jealousy or envy or desire for their thing. Cause I'm so clear of who I am and what right. I want, right? right? Yeah. Right, right. And I'm just, you know, I have nothing but coaches this year. I have nothing but coaches coming on my podcast and people go, but you're a coach. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, right, right. <laughs> we're, we're different personalities. We, you know, coach a little bit differently, right? We all work on the same thing. I don't care what they tell you, call it whatever you want. We're going to work on you. Right. 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 right? Yeah. Um, but it, it's, let's talk about, you deserve your clients. I deserve my clients and we deserve to have a conversation about different perspectives and our different techniques. Right. So, so true, yeah. 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 And, um, and if I know, and guys, this is where I love my clients to get to. If I know who I am so much that I can support who you are, that's what it's all about. It's so exactly what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, when we were having coffee, I'm like, oh, Nikki, let me introduce you. To oh, Nikki, let me introduce you. Right? <laughs> or I could have sat and go, well, that's interesting. You know, she would really, you know, do well with this person, but I'm not going to tell her about Why? Why? It's just, just insane. And I've been known to introduce people. I was at a networking event and a woman came up and we were chit-chatting and she recently left her job and she was really in limbo. Now, in the past, I would have taken that client, but it's really not who my avatar is. Yeah. And there's a gentleman who walked by, who's also a coach, who went, oh, let me introduce you to Lee. Lee, this is the perfect client for you, <laughs> right? Right, because 
that's what he was working on. That yeah. was his avatar, yeah. Yeah. right? Right. So you want the matches. I I want people sure. to be successful, sure. right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, what are some of the, so you do some coaching and, and um, a lot of dance instruction. And I'll tell you a little bit about my perspective on dance instruction. And then you can tell me about how you go about it. Yeah, let's okay. do that. Oh my <laughs> God, this is going to be so exciting. Oh, I know, so hey, exciting. As a, as a beginner, guys, if you're just dancing for fun, you're going to get all of the encouragement in the world. Dancers, if you want to compete, you can forget the encouragement. You're going to get that sucked. You screwed up there. You should be better there. Bend your knees, straighten your head, right? And I can remember, you know, and that a tango teacher, and I was doing Argentine tango for fun, came up and was like straightening up my neck because it wasn't straight enough. I'm like, give me a freaking break. <laughs> I'm oh not competing goodness. in this, right? Oh my goodness. Oh my so goodness. talk about um, some of your experiences and and how you actually help your students, um, and you do this in coaching too, tap mm. into the yeah. worthiness that they have in there. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh, this is like one of my favorite things to talk about. So I am not, so let's talk about the dancing thing first. I am not a regular dance teacher by any means. Nope. <laughs> I do not teach classes each week. I do not do choreography each week. That is not something I do. What I do, is I teach by request, actually. It's when somebody wants to work with me in whatever form that takes. But the thing that I work on very particularly in a very stealthy way <laughs> is, um, let's just say the idea of giving yourself permission to enjoy yourself. That's probably number one out of all of it. So to let go of whatever is going on with you outside of, you know, wherever it is, because now I teach online, right? So it could just be leaving whatever it is that you have going on in your life, like at the door of the room that you're in, or if you are in the dining studio, you can leave it at the door, right? So that you come into it with no expectation, no worry, no, you could have some depending on, you know, like, what you have some internal stuff, but the idea is to not let that cloud the time that you have. And I work the same way with creativity as well, because I'm not a person, I'm not like teaching or training specifically about it, the particular medium. So if you come and learn from me or you train, you do any of my challenges or my master class, it's not to do with them going, we're going to paint or we're going to do this or we're going to draw it has nothing to do with that it really has to do with this idea of of tapping into your own let's just say magnificence right your own ability to just explore and be curious and have adventure and that is what i work with on the creativity side and on the time side and then if there's something specific you want to work on so um, some of the time dancers will come to me because they want to be more confident on stage, for example, or like develop more of a like persona, personality, character kind of situation, which burlesque is really great for. But you still, you still have to, you still have to really nurture yourself. Like that's the thing. So you were talking about teachers who like yell at you and like that is totally unnecessary. There is right. no... You can like there are people that do that. I actually quit a team one time because the coach was like that. Literally, I gave up another like flamenco dancing because I was doing all the stuff at the same time. And to be on this team, I was like, oh, I guess I'm gonna have to choose one thing to let go of. So I chose not to do my flamenco dancing at the time. But he would say, "You guys suck." right? Like that would be the thing that he would lead with. And I'm like, I don't need to be here. I don't need to have this crap. I don't care how good you are and how good everybody thinks this team is. I'm not interested in this. P.S. It completely fell apart a few months ago. I mean, a few right? months after that, <laughs> because right? not sustainable, but you don't need to have that. It doesn't have to be that way. And people themselves push that on themselves a lot as well. It doesn't only come from a teacher or from the outside. So when I'm working with the the creative prompts and the creativity challenges, for example, it's a similar 
flavor because it's about letting go of what it's going to look like, letting go of what the results are and actually just being inside that moment of the creating or in the dancing and being inside of that moment where you are like super, super present, right? You just have all your like, <laughs> all your like cells are on fire tingling because you're in this moment experiencing this thing and you have no, we were talking about expectations earlier, you have no expectation as to what it's going to look like and you have no expectation of, of so, uh, the thing that's so sad is that people forget that <laughs> they're sometimes a begin they're beginners in a lot right. of things that you're trying right if you're new new to dancing or even if you are let's say you're an advanced dancer or a professional dancer there's still stuff to learn there's still things to di like dig into there's still moments that you're going to feel like you have no idea what you're doing <laughs> like this is so unfamiliar i don't know what's happening i should be better than this there's a lot of that going on oh my god yes so to just you know have that like that curiosity that and this is what one of the things that I talk about in um so I have foundations of my creativity coaching is basically the idea of weaving creativity in your, into your life every day so that you are always feeding that well of creativity so that it's never a point in your life where it will be dry because you're always feeding it so it's always there for you to tap into always at your fingertips and in doing that the idea like I said the foundations of that is to embrace and encourage creativity every day in your life so seeing it as a, a way to to experience and enjoy and have this like sense of wonder right like if you're gonna go see like a the Niagara Falls or something like that kind of wonder should be the kind of thing not should be right like invite that into whatever it is that you're doing because because then you will get the magic of it too, right? Like you'll actually- Magic of it, yes. You get the magic of it and you will not, you will not have this, this drag, this dragging feeling or this drag you down of like, it's not perfect or it's not, this is a lot of the problems here, right? Is that it needs to look a certain way. It has to be perfect. It has to be Instagram worthy. I need to be able to blah, 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 blah. So I actually encourage, I encourage epic failure is what I'm like, make it a spectacular failure and oh, how big of a failure gosh. can you make it? <laughs> so, so before I started podcasting, so I, um, I am a preparer, sorry. Um, that's, but that's I, how you got to do I, sometimes. That's right. <laughs> but I started with Facebook lives and I would literally get up in the morning and whatever the universe popped in my brain that day was what I was going to talk about. I had no plans. And sometimes out of bed to the computer and turned it on bedhead and everything. <laughs> yes, I love right? it. Right? And I, it. <laughs> I looked awful. But the whole point was, as bad as that is, I always got, I love your message, Gail. You need better lighting. Love your message. Comb your hair. I love you. <laughs> right? But I always got, love your message you know, uh, you need a better mic. I love your message. <laughs> but the point was the message. And that's okay, you got the message. All right, I distracted you a little bit with the lighting. I'll fix the lighting. Oh, I distracted you because my hair is a mess. I'll fix there, right? Because that's a distraction. But really, you know, I don't care how I look. I don't have makeup on. What you see is what you get. Maybe yeah. I've colored my hair. Maybe I didn't. Too bad. Sometimes I have roots, right? Yeah. Because you're going to see the person that you will get if you coach with me. You're going to see the person you will get if we go out for coffee. You're going to see the person that you're going to, you're going to get, right? That's what this medium is all about for me, right? And that's why these conversations, guys, we don't rehearse or practice. No, no, no. no, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, Nikki, what do you want to talk about? Okay, ready? <laughs> Three, two, one, go. <laughs> yeah. Right? Because it's a conversation of two friends sitting together having water. Sorry. I know, water. right? Okay, it's so it's funny. Water. In, water in my mug is right. Well. <laughs> right, right. It's really funny. Um, yes, every once in a while, you need to flush out the coffee with some water <laughs> <laughs> or wine. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> Oh, you're almost making me cry with that. Yeah, good, good. Um, but anyway, we will, Nikki and I are actually going to do a few of these podcasts. So you'll see her through the year. 
Um, this one is um, coming out really soon. And this is all about, you know, you are worthy. You know, you have it in there. You deserve what you want. You deserve your dream. You deserve to feel happy. You deserve, what did we, magnificence in your life. We deserve, you deserve the joy. You deserve to bite into that deliciousness. Oh my gosh. So, and the, you deserve the magic and you, well, and you just deserve, like, it's freedom as well. Mm. Oh my God, the freedom, how, I, and, and I can't express it. You have to feel it, right? That, that ability to, to breathe on a different dimension. It's a different level, right? You know, it is a weight that you don't even know is there. And when it's gone, you literally lose 20 pounds, yep. right? You literally, your shoulders are back, you stand up straight. And, you know, without any exercise, it just happens because you're proud of who you are and you're happy with the choices that you're making. Yeah. So Nikki, if people want to get in touch with you and know a little <laughs> bit more about your book, about your classes, about your, you, about you and what you do, what can they do? How can they get in touch with so you? So I absolutely love people to get in touch with me if they have any questions anytime. The, the book, actually, if you would like a free, the I give away the chapter for free. I wrote the chapter in the book. Um, it was It's about mind-body creativity connection and also how to boost creativity. And I talk about the principles in there. And if you go to is.gd slash heck yes, that's how you can get the chapter if you subscribe to my list. And if you look for Find a Delight Everywhere, I am on social media with that. And if you want to find me on Facebook, just look for just Nikki H., and I'm on Linktree is where you can get all my website -y information. So Linktree. And we'll have all of this. Slash find a delight. Up. But yeah. 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 And then oh, if God. you're interested in the challenge of the creativity activation masterclass, just let me know and I will get you info on that. But yeah, awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. how to get hold of me. <laughs> and you hold your masterclass more than once a year, right? Yes. It's going to be twice a year, maybe three. We're going to see. We'll see how it goes. And okay. I'll also be hosting two creative virtual creativity retreats this year as well. Yeah. yeah well, good luck. Well, thank you, thank everybody. You. And this is Gail Craft from the Empowering Process Podcast. If this resonated with you, let us know. Like it, subscribe, share. If you know someone who maybe could learn from this, this has been such a joy. Again, bye bye, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for listening to the Empowering Process Podcast. Be sure to visit Gail at gailcraft.com to learn more about how she serves thought leaders, entrepreneurs, and goal seekers. And remember, if you like this broadcast, be sure to share and subscribe so you don't miss an episode.